Hello, hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our yummy, delicious summer cakesicle class. I am happy to be here. And again, thank you for, for joining me. I know life is busy, especially this time of year. So thank you for being here. Um, so my name is Megan Faulkner Brown and I am the founder of the Sweet Tooth Fairy. Um, hopefully you have had a chance to meander the aisles of your local Michael store and see all the fun food crafting items that we have available there for you from meltables to sprinkles to candy to icing decorations to cake mixes and kind of everything in between. We even have an ice cream program going on right now, which is so fun. I'll talk a little bit about that later because I have some of our ice cream toppers that we might use as we get going along. So um so let's let's get started the cake sickles and cake pops i'm sure as you know they they are kind of a labor of love <laughs> because there's while simple there's kind of a lot of components and steps that go in to making the cake sickles so the first thing that we're going to start with today is actually we're going to get our molds ready to go with our meltables um coating them so a real quick plug for our summer meltables. Okay, these are meltables that come in a variety of delicious flavors. We have some standard ones that are here kind of year round, but these ones are available this summer. We have key lime, raspberry, we have a pina colada, um, an orange cream. We've got all these fun different flavors to choose from. Um, today we're going to work with probably the s'mores and the key lime one just because they're my personal favorite. <laughs> so I think it would be fun to do those flavors. But what's so neat about these, um, let me show you if you're not familiar with what a meltable is. I'm gonna we're gonna just cut this bag of these purple ones right open. But they are like, okay, they are not chocolate, but they kind of look and act like chocolate. So they're a confectionery coating essentially. And they come in these little wafers or these little drops, <clears throat> excuse me, we call them meltables. And you can see like they're hard, you can snap them in half. Um, again, they kind of act like a chocolate chip in many ways but they're not and they have super magical powers that I'll talk about here in a sec. But <clears throat> we came out with this in this the summer with these bags that you can just microwave. Um, so that's really, really helpful. And you can use this as your bag to kind of pipe and drizzle and do all the things. So the thing that's great about meltables is they're very, very convenient and easy to use. And because they're not a, like a true chocolate, um, they don't have to be tempered. So uh, that's really, really great for those of us who are not, you know, licensed professional chocolatiers. I don't know, is that a thing? Can you be a licensed chocolatier? Probably. I am not one. I just know how to use these and they're so fun. So I am going to put this in the microwave and I'm gonna pop it in for about 30 seconds. And, um, oops, let's see. <clears throat> all microwaves are not created equal, right? So I kind of always say, make sure to check on anything. Um, if you read the instructions and it says, you know, microwave for a minute, I kind of tend to check on it a little sooner because I don't want to scorch them. I don't want to overcook them. Um, so I'm going to do the same, same thing here. And they, so they, so they will melt, that's the name meltables. Sometimes when I say melt the meltables, I feel like it's a little redundant, but there's no other way, <laughs> there's no other way to put it. So we're melting them and you can see, I'm gonna put them in for just a little bit longer, but those little round wafers have now melted and turned, you know, they're, they're liquid E, although not a liquid, they're just melted. Um, so I'm gonna put it back in just for a little bit longer because I can tell there's still some, some chunks in there. And um, what's so great is that, so we'll, we'll get them out of the microwave. We're gonna coat our silicone molds. So these are 
some one of the molds that Michaels has available, a cakesicle mold. There's another one that we'll use here too um, a little bit later. But essentially what we're gonna do is coat the inside of these molds with the key lime meltable. And then we're gonna put it in the fridge and we're gonna let it set up and it will harden. So remember this guy that we used, how it's like, I showed you how you could like snap it in half and it's you know hard like a chocolate chip. These meltables will harden and set back up to their original state, which is just so wonderful. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna start. So I'm just cutting this bag. Uh, there's some, some dotted lines that kind of act as guides. I'm gonna cut the middle one because we aren't, I'm not using this for a precise little drizzle at this point. I kind of wanna let it come out a little bit thicker and more because we're, again, we're coating these molds. So and, um, I'm we do have a yeah sorry we do have a no, question you're here. Good. So yeah, do you need to um, make a hole or an air slit um, in the bag before microwaving? Um, no, uh, uh, not that I not that I've <laughs> not that I've ever done. So it's you great. Just pop yeah. it right in. Yep, just as is. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. You'll keep in mind though you're not you you probably will only microwave it total for about a minute if that so. It's not in there for for a long time, um, but yeah, you just throw that throw that right in. Okay, I am putting on a glove just because it's how I am. You don't have to do this, but when I play in the kitchen with a lot of meltables and a lot of frosting and cake and stuff, I like to use these. But also, you can just wash you know wash your hands. Okay, so. I put in probably about two-ish tablespoons of the meltables um, in each cavity. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kind of tilt the mold until, let's see, what angle is best for you guys to see this? We'll do that. I'm just gonna kind of tilt the mold one way. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the meltables to coat all sides of the mold because what we'll then what we'll do is we'll put it into the fridge we'll let it set up and then we add the innards <laughs> or the guts whatever you want to call it or the or the cake pop dough whatever you want to call it Let's see. So I appreciate your patience as we do this, because like I said, there's kind of a lot of steps when it comes to working uh, to making cake sickles and cake pops. It, it is pretty satisfying just to sit here and twirl this, though, and watch it kind of drip and fall. Okay. So close. Next time I will ask a couple of questions that came in, in the yes. chat. Um, so yes. is, uh, would it still work if um, someone filled the mold with cake and then froze it and then dipped it in the meltables? Would that work as well? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact, I have to say that is my preferred method. And I have some right now that are chilling um, in the fridge right now because I wanted to show you both ways. Um, I feel like that's the safest route to go, meaning these little gumdrops can be <laughs> kind of finicky. And the molds are amazing and they, they totally get the job done. Um, but you'll see here as we get working with them, because they're you know, chocolate, quote unquote, chocolate. And because we're kind of having to maneuver them and we're popping them out of the molds and we're shoving sticks into cake, like they can just be a little finicky. So 
this method is one way you can do it where we're with the excuse me where we will make like a little you know like a little cavity essentially for the cake filling to go in we'll let it set up then we'll put that filling in there then we'll come back on top of it with some of the chocolate and let it set up whereas the other way is we'll just put our um like our cake our cake sickle guts innards i don't know what you call them i call them guts but i feel like that's kind of a harsh word to use but um and then we'll put those and we'll let them ideally we would let them freeze overnight and then we dip them into the meltables so either way will work um, i think that you get like the same end product uh, depending upon like the consistency of your cake that goes inside here you know you might have a little bit of a sharper definition you see how this mold has kind of like the waffle look or the chocolate bar look um, I think they will be a little bit more defined doing it this way but again either way they're still going to be so cute and taste amazing so that's an excellent question and we, have we will another get to that question in <laughs> regarding this method um yeah. Is there any other way to uh, get the meltables to coat the cavities, like using maybe a knife, knife or a toothpick? Yeah. So you can. Um, so you know, what? I'm going to squeeze some of this into a bowl, and I'll just kind of show you, show you that. So um, you can. So one of the things to keep in mind is like. As you do this, and you can kind of see, do you mind keeping it on that shot for a sec? Okay, can you see how right here, see how it's not even like all the way up to the edge of the mold right here? You can just spot that and take some on the end of a spoon or knife or brush, to be honest, like a, oops, like a paint brush or whatever and then fill it in kind of that way you'll see we're going to come back and put a little bit more on these once they've been in the fridge for a little bit but this is just kind of like an initial coat um, and then we'll come back we'll do another little bit because you'll see as it sets there are parts where you can tell like oh the the multiple isn't that like thick in this area and you want it to be um, you want it to be completely covered in the mold so that it doesn't it doesn't break. So this is just kind of like the initial, um, you know, the initial step of of doing them this way. So the other thing is these molds have a little tiny slit. Um, and at this point, again, some people do it, some people do it differently, like at different stages of the, making the cake pops. I'm just going to go ahead and put these guys in at this stage and let them just, just live there happily while this goes into the fridge. While you do that, we, uh, a yeah. bunch of questions just um, came in. So the first I one is- I love the questions. <laughs> They're great questions Thank too. Um, yeah, they are. So the first one is, would um, if someone wanted to use icing or buttercream instead of the multiples, would that work as well? Ooh, so not at this stage. If you if you wanted, Emily, do you mind putting this in the fridge? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, and then will you bring? Sorry, one sec. This is going to help answer your question. Will you bring back the empty other mold? please okay thank you um i have a wonderful helper here named emily and she's back and forth between the fridge and the studio so okay so if you wanted to use buttercream um what was the other one i'm sorry that you had mentioned it's something else buttercream i said okay yeah. yeah so it wouldn't work for this method where you like put it in first to set up um but if you do it this other way where we put in the guts just straight up into the mold and let that set up and freeze that way, then you could come back with, in fact, I could even show you because I have 
some buttercream to mix with the cake. Uh, we could, you can melt your buttercream, right? So it gets thinner and thinner, and you can use that to coat the cakesicle. And um, yeah, you could totally do that. Now, I'm, I've never done it on a cakesicle before, but we, I've, I've melt, I have melted buttercream for lots of different things, whether it's a cake drip or if it's for a garnish for a cookie. Um, so yeah, that's a really great, that's a really great idea. But, and we'll try it. So good question. Excellent question. Was there another okay. one? Yes, we have about three more. Um, okay. So do the sticks have to go uh, through the meltable or can it just lie on top? Okay, so <clears throat> good question. <laughs> So those molds right now, the only meltable part that it's kind of going through is a little bit on the bottom of the mold that we did. And what you're going to see when we kind of get to that step is that it has to kind of be in the middle of the mold because we're going to gently, very, very gently kind of tease and press those cake guts around and inside of that uh, inside of the mold inside of the individual cavities and so you want it to be in the center because the weight of like the you know the meltable and the cake is like it needs more structural integrity uh, which is why you need it kind of jammed there in the middle because it will have the strength of the the meltable on the bottom and the like strength of the meltable on the top like sandwiching and holding everything together whereas if you just set it on the back side of the meltable the likelihood of the meltable falling off or it like snapping off or just breaking is exponentially higher because it doesn't have anything to like help it stay together i hope that makes sense um but the good news is okay the good news is that the the mold it it has these slits in fact i can show you thank you emily um i'll show you here they've got so the slit is like well let's see which way can you see best okay so you see how this slit is already positioned in pretty much smack dab in the center of of the mold so so that's 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 helpful and that's where where it should should be for the highest amount of success <laughs> like i said these can be finicky so um but i hope that answers i hope that answered your question or was there one it more does. we do have a follow-up to this and then one more okay. um so okay. can you add the stick after the cake mixture is in the mold that's one. And the second one is, how, well, go ahead. Go ahead and answer and I'll ask the other yeah. one later. Yes. Yes, you can. So, um, yes, the short answer is yes, you can. And again, with the method of doing the cavity first and then um, the meltable and the stick and then the, the cake, like if you didn't put the stick in, that's that's totally fine. We would just need to make sure that so let's pretend this had meltables and we didn't have the stick, but the meltables set up and then we kind of gently pressed in our cake mix and then we put the stick in there. The only thing you need to be mindful of when you're doing that is that you're like very, very gently kind of pressing it in because you'll see here, these molds are awesome and they're silicone and they're flexible, but what that means is even though the meltables have like set up and are hardened, because I'm kind of pinching and pulling and pressing, then it's, it, again, it just can be like a little bit finicky. So I prefer, again, my preferred method is to just straight up use these as a mold, put my cake mix. If I did a mousse, you can do a mousse. I did some Rice Krispie treats. I can show you today. Rice Krispie, whatever it is, press it in here, let it freeze, let it set up, and, and then, um, and then we then we dip it and i think that's the preferred preferred way to do it but if you did it the other way you definitely could put the stick in after you put the guts in 
Oh, oh like, long answer. Um, Here I was like, short answer. And then I did a very long answer, but I just want to make sure that I explain it the best. So, okay, there was one more. That was a great explanation. And yes, um, one more, and then I'll let you continue. Um, okay. So how do you store leftover um, meltables? Oh, so they just, as long as they're in like an airtight container, a Ziploc, um, Tupperware or whatever, they're, they're great. And they will last for a long time. There's, um, there's like best buy dates and whatnot on each of the batches that we do. And so just make sure you kind of check on there, but they last a really long time. And the great thing is, is that, um, yeah, they won't, they, they won't go bad. So if you don't use your whole bag, or if you only need like a tiny little bit, because you want to use this color as a garnish or whatever, you can just grab out, you know, a little handful of them, microwave them, and then save the rest for a rainy day. So that's, oops, that's a great question. And these are so versatile and they're so fun to use and they're so easy to use. And I'm excited for you guys to play with them. And I'm excited to see what you choose to do with them. So great question. Okay, are we, are we ready to move on to next step? We are, I'll just add in one quick question that came in. Okay. Can you add yeah. chocolate chip to the mix, to the, I guess, a meltable mix? Okay, so you wouldn't want to add chocolate chips to the meltables because um well first of all we have like cocoa we have like a dark cocoa and a light cocoa flavor that like has actual cocoa in it so you could use that as an option but if you mixed huh, i've personally never done it but if you've mixed like the real chocolate with the meltables the meltables i don't know that i could tell you how they would act like if they would maintain the same properties <laughs> that they currently have um, it would probably taste fine and taste delicious and my assumption is that they would set up okay um but i just don't know so i don't want to tell you definitively either way <laughs> so but if you try and it works let us know for sure so that's a great Perfect. question now we have lots of questions about the cake so we can move on to that part okay Awesome. Okay. So this, so I have a, this is just like a six inch cake round. Um, I actually had three earlier, but we used some earlier to make uh, some, um, some samples for you guys to see. But so this is just a cake baked ahead of time, wrapped in saran wrap, and then we have had it chilling in the fridge. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that so far ahead of time. I personally like to always have some baked cakes in the freezer for those last minute opportunities that always come up for, you know, someone's someone's something that they're celebrating. You can just take them out and frost them, decorate them real quick. But um, you could just as easily bake this same day, let it cool and use it to make your uh, your cake cake sickles. Um, the other thing is you can also just buy uh, like some store bought cake. Like if you're there, you know, if you're at a grocery store and there's some clearanced out cake that's in the back of the grocery store, you could buy that and use that. And um, you know, because we're we're adding frosting and stuff to it so you can definitely get it to that consistency that we're looking for so but yeah you're going to want to have your cake baked ahead of time and you can see i'm kind of doing this deliberately to like show you guys that you really just crumble it um and there's no right or wrong way you're just going to want to make sure that it's crumbled into all the pieces and so I'm sure kind of attacking a question that probably will come in ahead of time, which is like, how much frosting should I put in? Or how much is the ratio of cake to frosting for the cake mixes? So my cute dad, when I would ask him questions that didn't have an actual answer, he would always ask me back, well, how long is a piece of string? And I'm like, 
Oh, well, it depends. <laughs> it depends on what string you're talking about. So similarly, every cake mix is going to be different, right? So this cake is actually a really, really moist, uh, a moist cake. And and when you're making, you know, when you're making cake pops and cake sickles, you're kind of looking at looking for it to be a consistency like this, where it will just all come together and it's not going to fall apart and it's not going to crumble. Now this I'm going to add like a little bit of buttercream to, but you can see it's already like a really, really moist cake. Like I can already kind of press it together and it's going to stay in like a happy little ball but uh, and i know it's probably frustrating to hear because um because i think it would be really helpful to be like oh take you know two cups of cake crumbles and add x amount of buttercream to it but there's just so many different variables from recipe to recipe and from you know environment cake kitchen environment to ki kitchen environment but what i will say is if you if you know your cakes and you're like, oh yeah, my cake is spongier, or I, you know, some people like a, a crummier kind of um, drier cake, which is awesome. If you like a one that's a little bit has more moisture in it, like you'll kind of know your own cake, um, and you'll be able to kind of tell quickly, like, okay, if I just make a ball and pick it up, is it gonna like hold its shape on its own? Uh, again, this I'm going to add, honestly, probably just like a tablespoon of um, buttercream frosting to. Just because the when I was when I was um, mixing it, I could tell there were just like a few little parts of it that were still kind of breaking off. And the goal, again, is for it to hold its shape. Now, I will say you're going to want to err on the side of adding less buttercream to your to your cake as opposed to more because what can happen is if you add too much buttercream to it then it's going to get kind of oily and it's going to be like too wet and you can imagine like if okay if I'm sticking you know if I'm putting a stick in there is it going to like hold its shape when it's sitting upright granted it will have you know the strength bunny bunny ears strength of the meltables surrounding it but what you don't want is it to just kind of like fall and not hold its shape um out of uh like out of the the ball hopefully as you're playing with it that that will make sense but some of this is totally just going to be like trial and error now you can come back from if it's too much if you've added too much or if you're following a recipe and you don't know you, you know this is like one of your first first times and you don't know how moist the cake is you can add like a little bit i'll just do this just to kind of show you you can just add like a little bit of powdered sugar to it and that will help dry it out a little bit um, it will obviously make it a touch sweeter not terribly sweeter but you can add something powdery and dry to it to make it um, to make it a little bit drier if you've added too much stuff to it. So, okay, we good there? I hope that makes I hope that makes sense. A lot of sense. We just um, have um, a lot of people are curious about what cake is that? Is it confetti cake or? Oh yeah, yeah. It's yes. It is a, a funfetti cake mix so super good and so i'm not sure if you're aware of this or not but um sweet tooth fairy is actually also a retail bakery i started it i opened my first bakery in 2009 and um we have five storefronts here in utah we're, we're located just not too far outside of salt lake city right uh, today but um one of our most popular uh cupcakes we we sell cake bites we also you know we make a ton a ton of birthday cakes is what we call fairy fetty so anytime you know a customer calls in and is kind of waffling back and forth between not knowing what to order you know for the birthday or for the upcoming celebration like nine times out of ten they choose 
this like confetti, funfetti, we call it fairy fetti because, you know, sweet tooth fairy. But anyway, so you can never go wrong with with the funfetti cake, that's for sure. So, okay, so I was gonna show you just the other way. <laughs> There's oftentimes other roads in life that we can all take and still achieve great results. So I'm just gonna show you. So this is the method of just taking some of those guts and pressing them down in. Now you'll see here when I put the stick in, we might have to add like a little bit more or um, you'll see what it does to the cake as we press it in. I'll show you this too. I actually made some um, Rice Krispie treats and they're not, they're not, you know, they're not fresh off the stove at this point, but I would, if I were doing it real time, if I were making some, I would probably just put these as, as soon as they've cooled enough that you could touch them and not burn your little fingers off. I would just press them into this, these molds like this. And then we do another guy. So Megan, um, would you have yeah. to grease um, or spray the mold before uh, before putting the, the cake in there? No, so as, as long as it's clean, you know, like I, I wash them with warm water and just make sure you dry them out um, and that you don't have any like lint or, you know, leftover cake particles or whatever in there, then you're totally fine. Um, yeah, they're they're awesome. Okay, so you can see here, now I'm taking, these are these cute, they're kind of like iridescent holographic, super fun sticks that we got at Michael's. Now I'm just gonna shove, shove the sticks into the center of these cake sickles. Now you can kind of see how I'm having to like put some pressure on here as I push it in. And when you do that, a little bit of the cake kind of like comes up um, because, you know, it didn't used to be in there. The stick didn't used to be there and now it is. And so it's kind of pushing things up and maneuvering the guts around a little bit. So you can just combat that by, um, by pressing it down, you know, and if you needed to add a little bit more to kind of even things out, you totally could. So we'll just do that. So again, I prefer, I prefer this method. Um, but either way is, is great. So we'll do this. But you, so can you see how when there's chocolate in there, and if you're doing this at that point, you're gonna, the, the likelihood of you kind of, you know, crunching or splitting the chocolate in some way is, is definitely higher than if you don't put the stick in at this, at this point doing it in the other method. So, okay, so I'm gonna have, Emily, please do you mind putting those in the, Bridge. And then, okay, should we, yeah, why don't we blast, um, okay, so we had actually pre-done that last step, okay, so can you see how they, um, they're great, right? Now, this is, we did one of the Rice Krispies, so they the the mold like the in the indents and the cute design like they definitely hold hold the shape now you'll see here when we cover them with the meltables that they might not be as defined as the ones that we did the chocolate first cake and then the chocolate on top so 
Let's set this just right here. And I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna melt the meltables. Let's think of a not as redundant way to say that. <laughs> so Megan, uh, we do have we, a, yeah. oh, sorry about that. We do have a couple of questions about yes. this, um, this last step. So the first one is, um, do they go in the fridge or the freezer? Okay, so great question. And the answer here where I am, since I'm in a studio, I don't have an actual freezer here. So the ones that you just saw just came out of the fridge. And I actually asked Emily to go put them back in here because we're under studio lights and it's hot and they're not quite as like set up as I would like them to be to try to dip them. At home, what I would recommend is definitely putting those into the freezer. Now, um, you can, again, if you're doing this kind of progressively and you're, gonna, you're you know, baking your cake ahead, the day ahead, or you know, you're making your stuff, you're kind of slicing it up, you can put them in the freezer and just let them sit overnight. And those were, will definitely be frozen enough, <clears throat> excuse me, for, for the next day or for whenever you decide to use them. Um, so ideally, I would let them just freeze all the way overnight. But my life is such that I'm like all over the place. And I think having all the time to be able to commit to the entire process is hard to find that chunk. So divvying it up for me makes the most sense. And again, the other thing is like you can use like like I use Rice Krispies, you can use um, you could do like a mousse if you had like a, you know, like a, a no bake cheesecake or just any delicious innards that you would want to coat in a yummy chocolate, you could use that. And again, you want to let it freeze as long as long as you can. Now, you, it doesn't have to be overnight. Like I would just say to be super, super, super on the way safe side, I would do it for at least an hour. That's probably even, you know, enough. But, um, but yeah, overnight will for sure give you what you need. So does Perfect. that make sense? It does. And we do have two questions okay. that are related to this one. So the first one is, uh, I'll go ahead and ask both. Um, do yeah. you, does this apply to the Rice Krispies as well? And once um, the, the cake is out of the freezer, do we need to let it come to room temperature before dipping or uh, can we dip frozen? So you can, you can dip it frozen. And R Rice Krispie treats, um, like you can store them you can store Rice Krispie treats frozen as long as they're airtight. So again, a Ziploc, Tupperware, whatever you can to just kind of keep them airtight. But when you, you'll see here when they are chilled and when they're frozen, the meltables are gonna, they're gonna set up faster because, um, because they're coming in contact with something like immediately colder so that it won't be like instantaneously that they set up and are hard, but you'll kind of see that process that they'll go in. Like if you use the Rice Krispie Treat frozen and the cake, um, you know, the cake sickle frozen, they'll set up pretty, pretty quickly because they are not room temperature. So hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. And you can, again, a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of this is trial, you know, trial and error. And the way I do it might not be like what works best for you. And there's, there's a lot of different ways to, to make it to make the end result so if you find something that works for you that's that i didn't go over today then like please let us let us know because i definitely don't have all the answers i just love to do this stuff so we are in this together okay will you grab one of the i'm going to show them melting buttercream showing this going over the, um, so we just grab the ones you just put in the fridge, please. Thank you. So I'm just gonna show you real quick. This is some of the buttercream that I brought and mixed into our cake mix. I'm just gonna put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds and show you what it looks like. And then we'll put it um, over our, over one of our, uh, oops, over one of our cake sickles. And then this is, this is the fun stuff. To my new friend who asked if you could use buttercream, 
such a fun question and we're gonna we're gonna make it happen in real time okay perfect see, i'm just gonna steal one and then you want to put those back in the fridge okay so i just had emily thank you i just had emily bring us one of the um cake sickles one of the little naked cake sickles now again in a perfect world this will have set up at least for like an hour at the very least in the fridge excuse me freezer now i just pulled out my buttercream and you can see it's like super liquidy right so they're kind of like a little petty floor i'm gonna pour this <clears throat> so i can already tell you that this isn't like it hasn't been froze because we don't have the freezer here right it hasn't been frozen long enough for me to be able to just like hold it by the stick and dip it in here but if at home you have the chance to let it set up the way it's actually supposed to it will definitely be um it will be frozen enough that you could do that i just don't want to show it to you because this this is for sure going to fall out so i'm going to just do this like so i'm going to kind of pour it over the top And I could, now that I'm doing this, I could even um, thin out the frosting with like some of the, um, you know, milk or cream or whatever was in the, whatever the recipe called for. Let's see. So if it's thinned out, then I for sure think you would be able to, let's see, to see the definition of the, little waffle i'm calling it a waffle i think that's what it's called on the um on at michael's but with this like thick of a frosting it's not it's not doing that but i guarantee you if you thinned it out some um that it would totally totally work and you would be able to like see the definition of those waffle lines i don't know what we call them but anyway this was super off the cuff and I wanted to give it a try and show you that you can thin out your frosting by microwaving it. But again, if you're going to try it this way. Add a little bit of whether it's, you know, juice or milk or cream or whatever the recipe called for and thin it out even more and it should totally work. And then what you can do is after you've done the front and let that put that in the fridge or freezer, let it set up, then it will be cool enough you could flip it over and get the back side even with just like a little bit of a, of a spatula so anyway real life experiments this is fun <laughs> so okay we are we're getting close why don't we bring the yes the those we're gonna go back to our Key lime friends, thank you. And I'm gonna microwave the meltables here for just a little bit longer. And I'm gonna kind of show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. So this has just come straight from the fridge. So the, the mold itself is gonna be like, it's cool, right? It's cool to touch. And when you're at home and not under the studio lights, it will kind of maintain a little chillier of a temperature longer anyway. But um, so what that means is you see these areas of the mold where like you can still kind of see the pink poking through. That means that you for sure want to add more of the meltables to that. Now what happens though is when I take this right out of the fridge and add a little bit more to it it's going to set up pretty darn quick because it's cool um, because it's been freezing right or chilling 
freezing in your case, but you just can take some more of the meltables and using a spoon, using a knife, you can just kind of add a little bit more. You're gonna to wanna to thicken that outer wall up a little bit so that when we, um, when we go to take them out, that they're thick, that the, that wall is thick and not brittle. Let's see. And then right here, you're going to, at this step, you're going to want to make sure that you put a little bit of extra frosting, right, excuse me, meltables, on this patch where the where the stick goes in because that is the most like delicate part of the cake sickle and even when we're getting these out of the molds that's kind of the most delicate spot so you just want to make sure again that you add a little bit of strength so yeah some of these are already like pretty pretty set up and in a perfect world I would put this back into the freezer 10 minutes or so let this set up like this and then I would add the innards but because we're short on time I'm going to put some of the um, cake stuff in the center so that in the next eight minutes or so we can um at least get one of these popped out and show you how they've turned out. So in the meantime, I'm going to show you ones that we had already popped out and um, just show you how those turned out and just give you some fun, fun ideas to garnish them. So do you mind taking this and putting this in the fridge? Actually, and then will you add some of the guts to it? Thank you. Okay, we're gonna do a little swaparoo. Thank you. <clears throat> now, these cutie patooties are ones that we, um, we did the method where you put in the shell, you know, the meltables first, and then you, let that set up basically that process that you were just seeing now you can see though okay like see how right here some of it it's it's like thin if you have that you can just take some of the meltables and kind of touch it up a little bit you know and then no one will ever know um we're gonna take some of I'm going to show you. So these are a cookies and cream flavor, and then these are a s'mores flavor. Now, if we had more time together, um, like it would have been, it's so fun to kind of take the multiple flavor. So let's say s'more. So if you kind of, I call it kind of like backing into it. So if you're like, okay, I want to make a s'more flavored inspired treat, then I personally would probably be like, okay, well, why don't I either make like a graham flavored cake or a milk chocolate cake and then use that as the cake for the cake sickles um, and then, you know, use a marshmallow frosting or just a vanilla frosting or whatever, and then do that whole process that we just did, but use the s'more multiples. Similarly, you know, if I'm using uh, like the key lime, um, you know, we use the vanilla cake, well, funfetti cake, which is vanilla with sprinkles and a little bit of magic, but um, it would be so good if you did like a citrus flavored cake or even like a coconut cake. So you can use the, the, the summer meltables and their rich flavor to just kind of complement another flavor that you're adding to, um, to the treat in general. So hopefully, Hopefully that makes sense and just kind of gives you like a fun, fun perspective. 
So what I'm gonna do though here, just to kind of show you some fun things that you can do. So this is the s'more, no, this is the cookies and cream. And I'm just barely snipping the top of this bag. And what I'm gonna do is just drizzle the cookies and cream over the top. And then I've brought these cute little teensy tiny sandwich cookies. You know, Michael's has some really fun, um, just as you're checking out there, <laughs> you can find lots of fun, lots of fun little treats. Um, now we can take, let's see, let's take our s'mores one. And I, I got kind of crazy with this s'mores one. So what if we just did, instead of a drizzle, let's do, let's kind of do like a drip. Like that. It's kind of white, a little white on white, but that's okay. And then I brought a culinary torch to torch some of these marshmallows, but I don't know if we have time to get that crazy. But then you can just take some garnishes, again, that kind of complement or make up part of the flavor itself and add the garnish to the cakesicle. So I just took a graham cracker and I just took like a little chunk of chocolate and then I'm gonna add a little bit of like the marshmallow. So speaking of redundant, right? Our s'more flavored meltables with our tiny teensy little actual s'more on top. So that's just a fun, just a fun idea in terms of like garnishing or decorating them. Um, I'm gonna take, here's just some more white and and drizzle and then just get like your favorite sprinkle just do some sprinkles on there which is so fun so fun for summer right let's see i know we have like three minutes so hopefully emily will come back and i can show you popping out those those key lime ones here pretty quick while we're waiting, I'm gonna take some of this graham cracker and Megan, crunch it up. A... Yeah, sorry about that. Go for we it. do have a couple of questions. So yes, sorry about the kid. Um, no. So how do you store uh, the cake to close if they're to be eaten another day? Can you freeze them, for example? Yeah. So the so I have never had a problem putting multiples in the freezer, like. As, as an end product, right? So the only thing you're, my suggestion is you just wanna keep it airtight. So that protects it from any like condensation that might be in your fridge or your freezer or any like lasagna that's open. <laughs> that's like making it, you know, smell very pungent or whatever in your freezer. So as long as they're airtight, then you can keep them either chilled or or frozen, um, again, just keeping it airtight is is what you want to do for for sure. Um, that's a great that's a great question. How um, long would you say they'll last? Like once they're made, how long do you have to actually like keep them before they go bad? Um. So, okay. I, honestly, I feel like they could last months because if you think about it um you know i i'll say a month at least just to kind of be safe but if you think about you know anything that you've ever made ahead of time or that you've kept right like after you've had it like birthday cake for example if i have too much birthday cake which never happens because i eat it all all the time but if you did you know you can slice it up keep it airtight and keep it in the freezer. Well, you know, two weeks, three weeks or whatever, when I take it out and it's kept airtight and it's not like mingling with all the other smells and flavors, it's still super good. So if you know for sure 
you know, that you're going to want to make these well ahead of time, you're going to be really intentional, intentional about keeping these cakesicles safe and protected and, you know, maybe putting it in a special place in the freezer. Um, but I would feel totally confident saying for sure you could do it for, for at least, at least a month. I mean, I know not a lot of us like to admit it, but at the grocery store, stuff that we buy frozen, it hasn't, it, you know, it's been there for a minute. So, so give yourself some grace with time and, um, and it's going to be great. It's going to taste fine. And it's, it's going to save you knowing that you can like prolong the process and keep things longer and make stuff ahead of time. So hopefully that answers your question. And then Emily's going to run and grab that. We're so we're a little teensy over on time, but I want to hopefully they've had long enough to set up in the fridge. They might not because again, it's ideally they um, they have a little bit more a little bit more time, but are we okay if we go a few minutes over? Or do we need to call it? No, that is perfectly fine. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, I will show you one thing, other thing here too, before this is our, this is our little makeshift freezer friends. Um, okay. So these are the ones that we did that were just the rice crispy. So one thing that I like to recommend when you're removing these from the mold, you kind of push up from the bottom and then you're going to want to push the stick out while kind of holding onto the top. You don't want to like pull, you know, the crispy tree or the cake just again for chance of, um, of the stick kind of removing, but this is, this is just great. I'll show you one of the cakes. And again, ideally these get to chill for much longer, but you can see that process. So you can, again, you can tell this hasn't chilled long enough because some of it kind of broke off, but I promise if it chills for the amount of the proper amount of time, then you will be just great. And then as far as the, um, you know, the crispy tree, I'll show you real quick. So with this, you know, at this point, you can just dip it all the way into, if you had kind of like a smaller, deeper bowl, you could fill the bowl up with the meltables and just like literally straight up dip it like a frozen banana, um, you know, but just in the interest of time, we didn't, we didn't do that, but you can just coat it in the meltables and you just kind of do a little tap, tap like this. And then now Rice Krispies, you're not going to have that like super perfect smooth finish, which is to be expected because of the, because of the nature of the rice cereal. But what you could do is you could set up um, like you could do that process and then let it chill and then just do it one more time. So you'll get like a little bit smoother of of a finish if you were going for like, see, these are like super crisp and beautiful. If you did like two coats of meltables, then you would get like a more finished finished product. So. OK. Okay, so no promises at this point, friends, because like I said, we, we have had some time constraints, but you're gonna see that I'm kind of like teasing the mold a little bit, right? So I'm kind of stretching it, like pulling it away from, um, pulling the mold away from the actual cake itself. So I'm peeling it down like so, I'm peeling it back. And then I'm going to kind of push the stick out. Ah, sorry, I told you these are, these are sometimes finicky little buggers. 
So you kind of push the mold. <sighs> cute. So cute, right? So again, like, go easy on yourself with this process and just kind of know that if it cracks or if there's like a little break in the chocolate that you can um, you can fix it i'll show you you can just take some of the meltables okay so we got our other one so fun. Okay, so like see right here, see how that's not covered all the way? If we take our, where did our key lime go? We'll pretend this was melted and pretend I had a spoon. You could just like take a little dab of it and cover it up and like you'll never know, right? So anyway, so super fun. So fun. And then with this, like with key lime, you know, I have some graham cracker crumbs because I always think of the key lime pies from Trader Joe's that I love. And I just think graham goes so well with it. So I would probably like do, you know, like a little white drizzle and then throw on some graham crackers or even like you can get little lime wedge candies and kind of cut those up and, um, you know, just have fun. Just have fun with the decorating process. But holy cow. That was fun. That was a lot of information in an hour. Are there any questions at this point? I don't think we have any questions. Um, just a okay. lot of people really enjoying this and oh, good. other people Yay. that just watched that are excited to try this. So, Okay, good. Thank you so, so, so super much. Thank you for your patience and understanding that we're not in a, you know, a legit bona fide kitchen here, but I promise I promise you can do it. It's so fun. Get creative. Try all these fun flavors. They're so, so, so good. Um, and yeah, just let your creativity work its wonders and check back because I'm here, um, you know, a few times a month teaching classes and I'd love to have you join me again. So thank you. Have an awesome day and the sweetest summer ever. We'll catch you next time. Thank you.